Well, hi everyone. I got a quite interesting video for you today, I believe. I've had a long interest in history and particularly military history. And as a geotechnical engineer, I thought this particular story was fascinating. It came to my attention. It was an, originally an article by Professor William Bill Lawson. And it was talking about the soil sampling, the geotechnical engineering and the geology that went into the planning of the D-Day invasion on June 6, 1944. So I referenced a lot of the material in this article to produce this video. There's a link to this article in the description. And there's also a follow-on video that was posted on the ASCE YouTube channel. And I have a link to that video as well. And apparently Professor Lawson was inspired to do this story, to do the research after reading the D-Day book by Stephen Ambrose, and there was just a short mention of this episode of sampling the soil to plan the beach invasion for the D-Day operation. And so that inspired this professor to dig deeper. Also, I got additional material from this podcast, The Disappearing Spoon. So let's just go over in broad strokes what this operation entailed. It was the most significant military operation of World War II for the Allies and turned the tide to remove Germany from the occupied countries in Western Europe. The operation was planned for over a year, involved British, Canadian, and American forces, and there were several different beaches involved, Sword Beach, Juno Beach, Gold Beach, and then the U.S. beaches of Omaha and Utah. So to put this operation into perspective, it involved over 175,000 people, thousands of pieces of equipment, including 50,000 vehicles of all types, motorcycles, tanks, armored personnel carriers, armored bulldozers. It was an exceedingly complicated operation and was done under great secrecy. And the planning for this operation took over a year. So there are a variety of factors that went into the selection of the Normandy beaches for the D-Day invasion. You can see the Normandy coastline. So a lot of investigation and thought went into what the bearing capacity of the beach soils were at the invasion sites. That is, how well could the soil support the loading under tires and tracks as men and equipment moved ashore. And the geologists that were investigating these sites were concerned that the sand layer may be covering layers of peat or soft clay. They worked with a British race car driver who had experience in racing cars on Daytona and on other beaches. And based on his experience, he said a minimum sand thickness was 14 inches. So that was one of the things they set out to verify. So PD soils, they're clay soils with a high organic content. And some of the equipment that needed to be moved in was the half-track M3. They certainly didn't want to get bogged down in the mud as they landed ashore. It would have created huge bottlenecks and left the men uh, sitting targets as they were coming ashore. So in order to plan this invasion operation, they utilized a variety of intelligence sources, including aerial photographs. You can see this is part of the Normandy coastline. You can see all these tank barriers, all these offensive measures installed along the beach. This is a profile showing the type of beach defenses that they had against landing. One of the things that they looked at, the geologists, were bomb craters from earlier bombing missions by the Allies. And they were looking at the shape of the impact crater. And they realized where there were strong soil layers, the crater would be U-shaped. And in uh, weaker soils that you would have raveling of the sides and it would form more of a V-shape. So that was one of the things that they assessed in order to select the specific invasion targets for the Normandy coastline. They also utilized a lot of open source intelligence information. They looked at picture postcards. They solicited pre-war vacation photographs from the public to look at various beach features. Here's General Eisenhower talking to a group of paratroopers right before the D-Day invasion. These paratroopers dropped behind German lines just before the invasion on the coastline. So the Allies needed a lot more detailed information about the condition of the soils at these prospective invasion locations along the coastline. 
And to that end, British special forces, British commandos associated with the British Navy were selected to come in and perform nighttime operations, clandestine operations, to actually sample the soils. And I'll go more into the detail here. But they had to do it under very dangerous conditions. You know, the Germans had over three years since they occupied France in uh, June of 1940 to build heavy fortifications along the French coastline. You can see these machine gun nests here. So some of the key individuals were Major Logan Scott Bowden. This is a picture of him here. He was with the Royal Engineers. And then we have Sergeant Bruce Ogden Smith from the Special Boat Section of the Royal Marines. These gentlemen were in their early 20s when they performed this heroic operation. So what they had to do was they would use these midget subs or inflatable rafts to get within a few miles of shore. And then they'd swim in the rest of the way at night. And they were heavily laden. They'd have a water-resistant suit, their weapon, sampling gear, collection tubes, and so on. This is some of the equipment used that Sergeant Bruce Ogden Smith used to measure the water depths along various portions offshore, as well as uh, the velocity of the current. And once they got on the beach, they used a soil sampler 18 inches long to obtain a 10-inch sample of soil. Interestingly, they accidentally left one of the augers behind, and they decided that it should be okay, that it wouldn't alert the Germans to their presence because they thought it was in deep enough water. But the Allies molded over. They actually considered carpet bombing the entire French coastline with these auger samplers to throw off the Germans because if they find a sampler at a specific location, that would be a pretty good hint that that's where the Allies were intending to land. Let's look at some of this video that was copied from film during the D-Day invasion in 1944. See the various landing craft? The soldiers came under intense German fire. There were over 10,000 Allied casualties and over 4,000 deaths. But of course, as we know, the invasion was highly successful and again was pivotal in turning the course of the war in favor of the Allied forces to push Germany out of occupied Europe and eventually to their unconditional surrender in 1945. Those were certainly different times. One of the things that the Allies looked at as part of their pre-planning reconnaissance was to look at the depth of ruts produced by, by carts and horse-drawn wagons. They could infer the consistency and the strength of the soil and in turn the bearing capacity and the ability to support various equipment from that information. But could you imagine swimming up to these beaches at night, just the two of you trying to be very quiet, trying not to be spotted by the lights, the searchlights that were combing the beaches, collect your samples, put them in the collection tubes, swim back to your midget sub or inflatable raft and make your way out of there undetected. The stakes were incredibly high. If these individuals had gotten caught, it could have compromised all the planning and effort that went into the successful execution of this D-Day invasion. So as I mentioned, I like to read a lot of military history, and I just finished this book here, and it covers the period of 1939 to 1945 from the perspective of the German political and military leadership. And it's extremely well researched. And I would highly recommend this book. There's a link in the description if you want to check it out. With that, I want to send a shout out to those of you who have provided Buy Me a Coffee contributions. That's an excellent way to support the channel. I certainly also want to thank the channel members and those of you who have contributed to Super Thanks, additional great ways to support the channel. So I'll have a lot of new videos coming up, so please stay tuned.